This is the Farm Monitor. For over 50 years, your source for agribusiness news and features from around the Southeast and across the country. Focusing on one of the nation's top industries, agriculture. The Farm Monitor is produced by one of the largest general farm organizations, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Now here are your hosts, Ray D'Alessio and Kenny Bergamy. All right, and with that, we say welcome to our home away from home. So glad you're joining us for another edition of the Farm Monitor. Got a question for you. How's your internet service? Guessing a lot of you might be saying, what internet service? Yeah, it is a pressing issue, one that lawmakers are trying to address, as well as some EMCs. Straight ahead, we'll tell you what's being done in Carroll County to speed up service there, and why one farmer decided to cancel his internet service altogether. Something that's not slowing down anytime soon is the Georgia olive industry. In fact, it is ramping up. Hear from one producer on the careful steps they take in helping to create some of the highest quality olive oil the market has to offer. Plus, Ray with a special look at the unsung heroes of the rodeo business, the stock contractors, and the animals they provide. Best of all, he didn't have to go to Texas or Oklahoma to find one. There's a father and son team who's been doing it for a quarter century right here in Georgia. These stories and so much more start now on the Farm Monitor. Well, unfortunately, rural Georgia is often overshadowed by bigger cities like Atlanta or Savannah. Plus, they deal with a number of issues, including a lack of high-speed Internet or, in some cases, no Internet at all. John Holcomb has more on how one EMC is helping to correct this problem. Living in rural areas certainly has its advantages. Peace and quiet, privacy, and less people. But unfortunately, those in rural areas are having to sacrifice something for those things, and that's broadband. One in ten Georgians live in rural areas, and the unfortunate reality is that most of those either lack broadband or have bad service. If you look at this map, the areas in the state that are not in orange are unserved. However, all hope is not lost. Thanks to Senate Bill 2 that passed back in 2019, EMCs in the state are legally allowed to provide broadband service to customers. And that's exactly what Carroll EMC is in the process of doing after recognizing the need. Part of being a cooperative, we have a uh, elected uh, board of directors, uh, nine board members, and and uh, they recognize that there's just a need for uh, broadband. It's very similar to electricity it's in the 30s and 40s. The rural areas just were um, not getting the uh, the broadband that they needed. We actually funded a feasibility study, um, which found that two thirds of our members did not have access to adequate broadband, and so we started looking for a partner, somebody we could work with. They decided to partner with a company called Sync Global Telecom and have dove headfirst into phase one of the project. Carroll EMC serves six counties in West Georgia, totaling more than 10,000 homes. One of those homes is the home and farm of Dan Herod, a cattle and poultry farmer in Ephesus, who is beyond excited for upgraded broadband after having to cancel his internet service because it was so bad. Being in the farming business with the way technology is advancing, I'm really looking forward to what it can actually do, especially as far as monitoring things at the chicken houses and just uh, really looking forward to having something that is reliable and something that is um, more geared toward the rural area. Herod says that improved broadband will ultimately help him be more efficient with his time. Everything's automated pretty much, but it's just like anything else. You still have to have a, you know, you really want to keep an eye on it. So right now, the way we have to do it is um, you just come back to the farm every time, you know, four or five times a day just to check everything. And if we had reliable broadband, we could um, integrate the system to where we could pull it up on our cell phones or and you save a lot of trips back and forth to the farm. One other community member who's looking forward to the new broadband service is Kevin Jeter, a farmer and pastor of Ephesus Baptist Church. He and his congregation realized the need firsthand last year when they had to go virtual with their services due to COVID-19. We faced many challenges when we began to, to look for broadband providers because in our area there just weren't, weren't many. And uh, so we, we went with one, uh, but let me say this, our, our, um, the service is not what we hope it would be. You know, uh, it, we have spotty services. Sometimes we drop our, you know, during our live streams, the, the service will drop out. If the weather's bad, it causes interference on our, on our streaming. So uh, we, we battle it each and every day, and uh, we're excited to, to be getting uh, 
high-speed broadband into our community because we need it uh, tremendously. Reporting in Carrollton for the Farm Monitor, I'm John Holcomb. In the meantime, while it might be a relatively new crop to Georgia, olives have really taken off over the past decade with more than 7,000 acres planted last year. Contributing to that number, Woodpecker Trail Olive Farm in Tattnall County. Damon Jones looks at this year's crop and the award-winning oils it's getting ready to produce. You don't need to hop a flight to Spain or Italy to find the highest quality olives in the world. In fact, you don't even need to leave the state. That's because of growers like Tracy and Curtis Poling, who are growing world-renowned crops despite being relatively new to the industry. And this year's haul is looking to be a banner one. We're really excited about this. It's the biggest harvest we've had yet. And the trees are loaded. And there is such a good, successful feeling about it. To, you know, I know what this is going to be after we harvest it today and then we get it milled. That fresh oil that we can share with other people is just amazing. Now that harvest is officially underway, timing is everything to maintain the quality of the olives. That means getting them from the field to the press as quickly as possible is essential for producing the highest quality product. We have to make sure when the autos come off the tree that we treat them, we keep them clean. The equipment we use is free. Uh, and then we keep it cool until we get it in the mill. And so these autos were, are pressed within, uh, within less than 24 hours. So that, that maintains the polyphenols and that's what gives you the extra virgin olive oil. Because once the olive is removed from the tree, it starts oxidizing. And so you want to slow that process down. So by taking it from the tree and to a, re a refrigerated situation where around 57 degrees is where we keep it, keeps that oxidation at, at a minimum. Unlike some of the bigger operations around the world, these olives are hand-picked. While that might be a more difficult and time-consuming process, it does have its advantages. Extremely labor intensive, but it's better for the trees. The um, harvesting equipment can beat your trees up and they're very shallow rooted, so it can easily pull them out. So we're going to continue using, uh, you know, hand picking as long as we can, I think. It's just better on the trees and the fruit. While interest might be growing for olives, the problem lies in where to plant them. Even though this soil and weather are ideal for production, that isn't the case in the majority of the state. It's all into the, the climate that you have, for example, this climate is very similar to Turkey. Um, so the, the growing area is very limited. Uh, you go 10 miles north here, it's too cold. And you go 40, 50 miles south of here, it may be too warm. Having those optimal conditions has really paid off as this extra virgin olive oil has been recognized for numerous awards over the past few years. In fact, it was presented a silver award in last year's New York International Olive Oil Competition, the world's most prestigious quality contest. It's the type of recognition the pollings believe is just the beginning for oil production in Georgia. Anything that we can share like that and the, the health benefits and everything and, and the people who have even come and visited the farm, when they taste the oil that we produce here, it, it, they don't buy it off the shelf anymore. There's other growers here in, in Georgia, but I, I want to, Georgia to become to the point that, hey, I get my olive oil from Georgia. Forget about Turkey, forget about Greece, Italy. Reporting from Tattnall County, I'm Damon Jones for the Farm Monitor. As we all know, the domestic rail transportation network is vital to moving agricultural products and goods. However, rising freight rail rates are putting added pressure on farmers and their income. Daniel Munch, associate economist with American Farm Bureau Federation, says rail rates on ag goods have risen as much as 18 percent. One of the main takeaways from our research was a clear increase in the cost of shipping agricultural commodities on domestic rail systems. Rail rates on corn have gone up 13 percent, on soy have gone up 11 percent, and on wheat 7 percent over the past five years. Similarly, rates to transport ethanol have increased 18 percent, or about four cents a gallon. In the ag sector, we found that over the past 15 years, non-competitive rail movements or routes not subject to strong competition have increased from 20 percent of revenue to about 42 percent of revenue. When there's limited competitive forces, this can incentivize price setting behavior and disproportionately impact rail customers like farmers and ranchers limited in their ability to choose other options to transport their goods. Well, this shot here certainly wasn't their first rodeo. No, Charlie and Ross Lowry of Somerville are seasoned veterans of the sport and the services they provide are widespread. 
More on 4L Rodeo and stock contractors when the Farm Monitor continues. I'm Hal Cromley. I'm part owner of Nailwood Farms, which is located in Bullock County near Brooklyn, Georgia. Me and my brother Chap are the sixth generation of Nailwood Farm. Um, our sons are the seventh, and, and both of them farm with us, which is a big plus to us. We actually get off, get, get off a little more often whenever you have two sons working for you. And then we've got two brothers, Jimmy and Tim Aldrich, that work with us. That uh, They've been a blessing to us since they started helping us in 1989. My name is Colby Cromley. I work on Nellwood Farms with my dad, Hal, my cousin, David, and my uncle, Chap. On Nellwood Farms, we grow peanuts, cotton, and beef cattle. On the farm, some of my responsibilities are planting, spraying the cotton, peanuts, and harvesting. One of my favorite memories on the farm is being able to stand beside my dad on the seat in the truck um, headed to the tobacco shelter. We would do that every day. We would go check the barns to make sure all the tobacco was cooked right. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoy peanuts, I guess, because I, I've, I've always tried to find a, a special passion. I used to plant tobacco and we got away from it in 1999 and uh, I took on the peanut part of it. For the next generation of farmers, I just, I can't stress enough for them to keep up with the extension service, to keep up with, with everything that changes from year to year, the new chemicals, the new seeds, if you stay with one seed, if you stay with one chemical, you'll get left behind. Every year, we work with the extension service and plant five or six different varieties of peanuts. You have to have three different trials of each, each peanut seed. And we work with Bill Tyson and Scott Mumford to, to see what each new variety is gonna do compared to the varieties that came on before. Um, this is very interesting to watch these new peanuts grow and how different they grow from each other. And, and what they produce uh, means a lot to us and means a lot to, to the peanut farmers in the years to come. I like to farm because I like to uh, plant the seed and watch it grow and to be able to take care of the land for future generations. When it comes to rodeos or professional bull riding, they are rarely seen or even heard from in some cases. Yes, all too often, lost in the shadows of the competitors, the rodeo clowns, the promoters, are the stock contractors, the ones who provide the broncs, the bulls, the steers, basically all of the animals. Without them, there would be no rodeo or PBR. Needless to say, it is a competitive and time-consuming business. One, the 4L Rodeo Company in Somerville, Georgia, knows all too well. In fact, They've been doing it for over a quarter century. But, as I recently found out, owners Charlie and Roz Lowry are more than just stock contractors. They're also ambassadors for agriculture and what one thinks of when they envision a real-life cowboy. The look in their eyes says it all. A look that could send chills down the spines of even the best, most experienced riders the sport has to offer. A look that is typically followed by violent, bone-jarring and sometimes bone-breaking movements. It's a look Charlie Lowry has seen too many times to count. Sometimes you'll have a bull and the first few times you buck him, you'll think, man, this is gonna be the best one I ever had. And he might be and then he might go the other way. You know, same as a football player, you know, you see guys in high school and you think how good they're going to be, but they never make it to the pro level. We're looking for 
athletic ability in the livestock. You know, uh, it's it's uh, genetics, just like racehorses or beef cattle, or you know, I mean, if you're gonna raise a beef cow for, you know, to sell sell yearlings off of, to, you're gonna want a good bull that uh, produces good, you know, good meat and good calves and same deal with the bucking bulls if you're gonna raise bucking bulls you want to you want you want them out of you don't want a Hereford bull and hang his cow and gonna try to make a bucking bull out of it you know you want you want stock that's produced bucking bulls and uh, the bloodlines have got to be a really big deal over the last 15 or 20 years and it's the difference with the bulls and the horses uh, the bulls you don't have near as much time invested in them uh, to know if they're going to work out as you do a, a horse, if you raise the horse. Charlie, himself a former champion roper and steer wrestler, founded 4L Rodeo in 1985. Since then, the company has grown dramatically, from five small productions in its first year to now producing 25 events annually, everything from high school rodeos to professionally sanctioned events. In 2009, the Lowry's expanded their operation even further by partnering with Diamond S. Bucking Bulls in Weatherford, Texas. That partnership resulted in the Lowry's providing stock for the more recognizable rodeos, such as the PRCA Extreme Bulls Tour, and National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas. Well, it, it's grown a lot. There's, there's a lot more rodeos than it used to be. It's, it's become a, a more popular event, I think, and, and uh, it just, it's, it's a lot more money, a lot more sponsors in it now, a lot more money to be won as far as the contestants. So it, it's really been a lot better for everybody. We hear, you know, young kids a lot, I want to be a stock contractor, and. I just tell them, well, you, you better be ready to work. Uh, we're, we're in this, this is our livelihood. There's people in this business that make money the other way, and then the stock contracting business is just kind of a hobby. And I've told committees for years, you know, if I go talk to them about having a rodeo, I'm not here today and gone tomorrow. I'm, I'm in this for the long run. I mean, like for us, it's, it's about taking care of us. Uh, we want to do a good job at the rodeos that we do. Uh, we put a lot into it. We we work at it every day, and you do a good job. It takes care of itself. Arguably, one of the biggest misconceptions about the rodeo business is that the animals are treated poorly. Some groups going as far as saying the animals are abused or even drugged before competitions. Again, a misconception. The flank rope that you put on the bulls, they don't, it don't hurt them in any way. It's just aggravation. It makes them kick. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not tight. I mean, it's snug, but it's not tight. It don't hurt nothing. Uh, and they got a pretty good life. I mean, they hang out, they eat every day. They lay around, they go to the rodeo, and they have to perform for about eight seconds, you know. 10 or 15 times a year, sure. and the rest of the time they're hanging out. Huh? It sounds pretty, sounds pretty easy to me. It don't sound real. Uh, it don't sound real like they're very mistreated. We feed them every day, as you can see here. They have good grass. Uh, we feed them grain every day. We deworm them. Uh, we give them the shots they need to keep them healthy. Uh, Anytime we go out of state, we have to have health papers on them. And, and I mean, they, they have to be healthy or they won't perform. You know, they're just like an athlete. You know, if an athlete's not in shape and healthy and, you know, he can't, he can't perform. And this livestock's the same way. And we love animals. If we didn't, we'd be in another business. Me personally, I could not see them doing anything else. They love what they do. And you're gonna love this story up next. Division now a reality. Medical scrubs made from 100% Georgia cotton. 
the Field to Closet initiative when the Farm Monitor continues. What started as a vision to reimagine an end-to-end -end U.S. supply chain to reshore American manufacturing and revitalize communities is now reality. 100% Delta Pine cotton scrubs have been delivered free of charge to 15 rural Georgia hospitals and will be available for purchase soon. The cotton in these scrubs was grown in Georgia. The yarn was spun in Georgia. The material was made in North Carolina, and the scrubs were cut and sewn by America Knits in Swainsboro, Georgia, completing the circle from cotton grower to scrub-wearing medical professional. In addition to being soft and breathable, these cotton scrubs offer an extra layer of protection with an application of Protex 2 AV, an antibacterial and antiviral technology scientifically proven to destroy COVID-19. Reimagine, reshore, revitalize reality. Finally, this week, when it comes to dairy, data and the knowledge it brings is everything. It also aids in making a positive impact on all areas of agriculture. In his latest report, Miles Ramsey of Holstein Association USA shows how genomic technology paves the way for a healthier and more profitable future for the nation's dairy herd. High performing, healthy and hassle free. Three traits that can make all the difference to a dairy producer's quality of life and bottom line. Dairy production specialist Katie Martin with Zoetis. We want to help create that cow that nobody knows number 2400 because she is, she's not a problem. She Every day she does what she's supposed to do, she's living a good life, and she's producing a high quantity of fat and protein. Over the years, research has shown keeping cows healthy goes beyond good care and management. It's about genetics too. The Clarify Plus genomic test from Zoetis offers a look at the genetics behind key wellness traits, allowing dairy farmers to make real progress in their herds. With the wellness traits that are a part of our Dairy Wellness Profit Dollar Index, I see every day herds that are healthier. I, I see every day less cows getting mastitis, less antibiotic treatments, higher levels of fertility. Um, I see cows staying in the herd longer and so then we end up raising less heifers and it's it's just a circle where if we can create healthier cows it, it it impacts the business in a positive way and with each generation there's more data and information to power genetic selection tools this tool is is unbelievable and it's amazing and, and our dairy producer of the future or five years from now should be thinking about this tool and how to use precision planting with cows. Zoetis also offers the computer program Enlight to guide producers when analyzing genomic results. With Enlight, you're able to generate many different reports. You can look at graphs with your genetic progress with individual traits based on the industry. And at any time, you can pull a mating report for your uh, AI team to strategically make matings based on the genomic results. Looking to the future, U.S. registered Holsteins remain at the forefront of genetic progress, productivity, and profitability. For me, a registered animal is, is fundamental to genetic progress because that there's an abundance of information and we can use that information to create that perfect cow that's very profitable across our lifetime. For Holstein Association USA, I'm Miles Ramsey. Miles, thanks so much, and as always, thank you for making this show possible. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time right here on the Farm Monitor. As always, have a great week.